Hello everybody, we are back with another video and we are breaking down our next Primordial God. So today we are going to discuss the Primordial God, Van Thanes, um, who is the Primordial God of creation. So um, like I've done with all the other ones, I've got a whole bunch of... Um, extracts from different mythologies that he has appeared in. So, so Thanes was the primordial god of creation and in the or Orific cosmo cosmology he was the generator of life, the driving force behind reproduction in the early cosmos. Thanes was hatched from the world egg, a primordial mix of elements split into its constituent parts by time and by inevitability. So they were, so the, the primordial god of time was Kronos, and of course, the, the primordial god of inevitability was Anarchy. Thanes was the first king of the universe who handed the royal scepter over to his daughter, Nyx, who in turn had it handed it down to her son, Uranus. It was then seized by the titan, Kronos, and afterwards by Zeus. The ultimate ruler of the cosmos. Some say Zeus devoured Thanes in order to absorb his power and redistribute it among a new generation of gods, the Olympians. Now the, um, the Orifix equated Thanes with the elder Eros, who was the primordial god of desire, of Hesiod's theogony. So there is a lot of overlap between the elder Eros or the primordial eros and the um, and the primordial fanes. So there's a lot, of, lot of um, crossover and mix and mixing and mashing between the two. Um, so, so, yeah, so, so some of the myths will name them name name fanes as fanes, and others will name it as eros. Um, which came before which? Who knows? I guess. But, um, but yes, there is a lot of crossing over there. The Thanes also incorporated aspects of other primordial beings described by various ancient writers, such as Theseus, Theus, and Orpheon. Thanes also echoes the figures of Metius, the goddess devoured by Zeus, and Thetis, nurse of all. Thanes is described as a beautiful gold-winged hermaphrodite deity wrapped in the coils of a serpent. His name mean, means bring to light or make appear from the Greek verbs. Um, so, so here we have a little bit of um, one of the Theogenies. This is number fragment 54 from the Orthiaca Theogony. Originally there was hydros, water, he says, and mud from which Gaia solidified. He posted these two as first principles, water and earth, the one before the two, Theus, creation. However, he leaves unexpressed his very silent being of its ineffable nature, the third principle, Kronos, time. After the two were engineered by these, earth and water, and it was a serpent, Dracon, with extra heads growing upon it, of a bull and a lion, and a god's countenance in the middle. It had wings upon its shoulders, and its name was Kronos, but also Heracles. United with it, anarchy, being of the same nature, Incorporal, her arms extended throughout the universe, touching its extremities. So then it says, so um, I think this stands for the third principle, occupying the place of essence. Only he made it bisexual as Thanes to symbolize the universal generatory cause. And I assume that the theology of the Orphic Rhapsodies discarded the two first principles together with the one before the two that were left unspoken and began from this third principle after the two 
because this was the first that was expressible and acceptable to human ears. For this is the great Kronos, an ageing time that we found in it, the father of ether and chaos. Indeed, in this theology too, this Kronos, the serpent has offspring, three in number, moist ether, unbound chaos, and a third, misty Erebos. Among these, he says, Kronos generated an egg, this tradition too making it generated by Kronos, and born among these because it, it was from these the third intelligible triad is produced, Banes. The egg, the dryad, and the two natures inside it, male and female, heaven and earth, and the, the plurality of the various seeds between, and thirdly, an incorporeal god, fanes, with gold, golden wings on his shoulders, bull's, head, bull's heads growing upon his flanks, and on his head a monstrous serpent, presenting the appearance of all kinds of animal forms. And the third god of the third triad, this theology too, celebrates as firstborn Thanes, and it calls him Zeus, the order of all of the whole world. Wherefore, he is also called Pan. So much this second genealogy supplies concerning the intelligible principles. So, so I guess as you read through that, you can see how, how I suppose the creation myth evolves over time um, as and as I suppose as humanity kind of became more aware of things or more maybe perhaps more curious about how we became to be how the earth came to be how the, you know the universe and the cosmos came to be that as, that throughout the ages the myths do change and I feel like Thanes is um, probably a very good symbol of that changing in understanding of how we came to be. Um, so, so he is in a few of the, especially the creation myths of the various um, of the various theogenies. So this one. So this is a hymn to Thanes. This is an Orphic hymn to Thanes. Um, it's hymn number six. And it says, Fumigation from Myrrh, O mighty progenitors, pro pro progenitors, first begotten, hear my prayer. Twofold, egg born and wandering through the air. Bull warer, glorying in the golden wings, from whom the race of gods and mortal springs. Celebrated power, ineffable occult, all shining flower. Tis thine from darkness, mists to the pure, the sight, all spreading splendour. Pure and holy light, hence thanes called the glory of the sky. On waving pinions through the world you fly. Dark-eyed splendour, see I sing, genial or pundant, ever-blessed king. With joyful aspect on these rites, divine, the holy consecration proprietor sh shine now there are some prophecies um, that he does he also does feature in from ancient times so um, this one is from the of Orf Orphurica Rhapsodies fragment 167 so then Zeus by by engulfing Erechtheus, the firstborn Thanes, he had the body of all things in his belly, and he mixed into his own limbs the gods' power and strength. Because of this, together with him, everything came to be again inside Zeus, the broad air and the lofty splendour of heaven, the undraining sea and earth's glorious seat, great Oceanus and the lo lowest Tartara of the earth, rivers and boundless sea, and everything else, and all the immortal blessed gods and goddesses, all that had existed and all that was to exist afterwards, became one and grew together in the belly of Zeus. 
after he had hidden them all away, again in, into the glad light from his holy heart, he brought them up, performing mighty acts. So that's just one of them, so, but there are um, a few others as well. Um, a lot about, and a lot of them discussing um, the egg that he was born from and how the when the egg split like this one this one's probably this, that was the best one this one is and he says that the world began in the likeliness of an egg and the wind chronos and anarchy intertwined encircling the egg serpent fashion like a wreath or about then began to constrict nature as it tries tried to squeeze all the matter with greater force, it divided the world into the two hemispheres. You, um, Arrhenaeus and Gaia, heaven and earth. So that so he does come up a lot in this, where where um, the ancients believed that the cosmos was literally created from the egg. So you had the two first um, primordial energies. Um, squeezing tighter and tighter and tighter around the egg until it literally split into two then creating the heavens and the earth so he does so this is where Thanes comes in a lot into these type into these particular mythologies but much like the other primordials i haven't been able to find anything in relation to how the ancients worshipped him or if there was a cult of Thanes, like in like such as you know, such as some of the other gods had cults like Isis is a good one for that one. Um, but unfortunately, the primordials, a lot of the information does come from just fragments that are far, that predate a lot of the known, known mythologies from around the world. So a lot of information has been unfortunately lost to time. But that's just a little bit about the primordial god of Thanes. Um, hope hope you all found this um, this one interesting. We'll be back with another video next week. Until then, I hope everybody has a great rest of the week and weekend and we'll chat soon. Bye.